Thank you, Sarah. Good morning. So to begin, my open source role at HP actually includes two areas. It includes leading open source community engagement, as well as legal support for open source matters. The topic I'm going to discuss today actually ties those two areas together, the topic of licensing models and building an open source community. I believe that there's three critical components that are needed and necessary to build a successful and vibrant open source community. First and foremost, I think you need a great technology. Second, I think you need a fair and sound governance structure. And third, I believe you need a licensing model that's viewed favorably. Now, all three of these are not created equally. Clearly, the most important component is a great technology. Without that, governance and licensing models are essentially irrelevant. That being said, I do believe that the open source license plays a role in building that community. So to tee this up, bear with me, because I'm going to make an actually a very overly broad generalization about open source licenses. I'm going to categorize all open source licenses into two buckets, copyleft and permissive. Copyleft, meaning you have a contractual obligation to contribute back to the community, and permissive, where you don't have that contractual obligation. So that being said, can a permissive license be used to build an open source community? I was actually grappling with this question 10 years ago. At the time, I was with Sun Microsystems, and I was helping to lead our efforts in open sourcing Solaris. Solaris was Sun Microsystems' operating system. It was a key technology for the company, critically important. And we wanted to build a vibrant open source community around that. So I started thinking pretty hard about this question around copyleft versus permissive, and whether you could build a strong community with a permissive license. At that time, I came to the conclusion that you could not. I believed at that time that you needed to use a copyleft license to build a community, that you needed to have a contractual obligation to contribute back to that community in order to build a vibrant community. Now, granted, part of my thinking may have been um, impacted. I was, I'm a lawyer by training. And at that point, 10 years ago, I was fairly new in my career. So I definitely looked at things from more of a black and white perspective than I think I do today. However, that being said, when I looked around at what was happening in open source, what I saw was all of these strong, vibrant communities were copyleft. So at that time, I firmly believed that we needed to use a copyleft license. So fast forward to today. Is the answer to this question the same? Today, can you use a permissive license to build a vibrant open source community? I think in order to answer this question, it's important to take a look at a few different things that are happening in the realm of licensing. What's happening in the open source licensing landscape, for instance, what's happening in terms of companies participating in those projects, as well as contributions to permissive projects. So to take a look first and foremost at the open source licensing landscape, looked at a few different survey sources, Black Duck, Flossmull, and Google Code. Now, granted that all three of those survey sources have slightly different statistical methods and ways of looking at this in survey uh, samples, et cetera, all three are showing the same trend. All of them are showing a trend of projects increasingly using permissive licenses. Now, this is not to say that the GPL family of licenses is going away anytime soon. I mean, if we look at this in terms of absolute numbers, still, GPL clearly leads. However, I do find it an interesting trend over recent years that projects are increasingly using permissive licenses. Another important aspect I wanted to take a look at was vendor engagement with open source projects. What are we seeing in terms of vendor engagement with open source projects? Well, first, looking at the strong copy left, I think what we see is a, a, a fairly significant, um, grad, actually gradual increase until around 2006, 2007 timeframe. Around 2007, 2008, we just start to see a drop in strong copy left. Around that exact same time period, we start to see a pretty significant increase in permissive licensing projects, in, per, in vendors engaging with those permissively licensed projects. Pretty interesting. So I'm looking at this thinking, OK, well, we're seeing projects increasingly using permissive licenses. We're seeing vendors engage more with those permissive licenses. So I started to think, well, what impact is this having in terms of building a community? What impact is this having in terms of code contributions to those permissively licensed projects? 
In order to look at this, I did a fairly simple review of a few different uh, projects. What I wanted to look at, try to create some similar situated projects. So looked at a few new open source cloud projects. Looked at OpenStack, CloudStack, and Eucalyptus. Now, OpenStack and CloudStack are both permissively licensed. Eucalyptus is copyleft. Now, one footnote is CloudStack recently changed its licensing model in 2012 from a copyleft licensing model to a permissive. As I was looking into that and kind of digging into the details around that, I found one interesting statistic that I found was with respect to the number of contributors in CloudStack. In the 12-month period following when they changed the licensing model from copyleft to permissive, we saw a 175% increase in the number of contributors. Pretty interesting statistic. And it also ties nicely into the prior point about vendor engagement increasing with respect to permissively licensed projects. So kind of going back to the, the statistics on this slide, looking first at Eucalyptus, copyleft license. This is as I would anticipate and as I would expect. Again, a great number of commits. It's a very vibrant community. And that's what I would expect from a copyleft project. That's what I would have expected 10 years ago, and that's what I would expect today. Then turning now to OpenStack, project created three years ago, an incredible number of commits and contributors as well. So if we look at these statistics, I think they clearly show that you can indeed have an open source project that's permissively licensed where you have a large number of contributors and contributions to that project. So going back to that same question that I was grappling with 10 years ago, can you use a permissive license to build a vibrant open source community? I believe the answer to that question today is yes. Thank you very much.